Welcome to my talk, Absolutely Everything GraphQL in Under 10 Minutes. Buckle your seatbelts, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be a little fast. Here we go. All right, so if you're like me, you might have wondered, what is GraphQL? And you probably started at Google, and the results were not very helpful. Here's some official ones. It's a new API standard. Nope, just kidding. It's only a specification. <laughs> Wrong again. Uh, GraphQL is a query language for APIs and a runtime for fulfilling those queries with your existing data. If you're like me, you're like, uh, seriously though, just tell me, what is it? <laughs> so this is the definition that I have. GraphQL is the new and better way to send data between your apps and your servers. If you know REST, which you probably do, it's like REST++. So before we get to the fun stuff, let's uh, cover a little background info. Who made it? Facebook. When did they make it? I don't know. But they open sourced it in 2015. And why did they make it? Well, they were making lots of mobile apps, and they were realizing that they were transferring way too much data, and it was very slow. They also had a proliferation of different clients. They had desktop, multiple different mobile versions, and they wanted uh, faster development cycles. So who's using it? Some big names. You might recognize a few of these if you don't live under a rock. So let's get to the part you're excited about the example. So here's uh, an example I've taken from the official website, How to GraphQL. We're going to be talking about a, a blogging app. And let's say we want the user's name, their posts, and their most recent followers. How would you build this with REST? You, you probably already know the answer. We probably have three endpoints, one for getting user information, one for getting information about posts, and one for getting information about followers. <coughs> That'd be pretty predictable. We send the first request, and we get back some data. You can see the only thing we actually care about here is the name. So we actually get way back, way more than we wanted. And then we uh, ask for the posts. And once again, we're just looking for the titles. But instead, we get loads and loads of extra information. And the same thing for the followers. How would we do that with GraphQL? Well, we'd have one endpoint and one request. And here's what a query would look like. It's extremely legible, actually. We're asking for this user's name, the title of their posts, and their last three followers' names. Do you see how legible that is? And we get it back exactly how we would expect. We see the name. We see an array of posts with just the title, and an array of followers with just the names. So that's GraphQL, the uh, microscopic view. Let's zoom out and look more at the macroscopic view. Because the front end can ask for the data that it wants, we can have multiple different clients. They can all hit one GraphQL endpoint. And behind that, we can have a whole microservice architecture. We could have legacy systems, or we could even have third-party APIs. It would work beautifully. There's also a bunch of interesting technologies coming out with GraphQL. Uh, this is something that Facebook made called Graphical. Notice the little I there, Graphical. And it demonstrates some of the great advantages of GraphQL. Here we have uh, a query that we're building up here. We can type it, hit play, and we'll see the results. And you can see it has great features like type ahead, the type of the field, and some documentation. So that means GraphQL has autocomplete, strong typing, and it's self-documenting. So the quick recap on GraphQL. One endpoint, front end gets to pick the data in the format, strongly typed, and self-documenting and discoverable. Now, the moment you've been waiting for, a quick demo. And what would a demo be without a to-do list? <laughs> <laughs> so, let's add an item. Um, basket, all, oh, hit, enter. Oh, great, it'd help if I could spell. But there it is. That's our, that's our demo. And you can even uh, drill into these and get other messages here. So it's a nested to-do list. Amazing, right? So, moving on. You're like, oh wow, you totally blown me away, man. That's, that's absolutely incredible. I never would have thought that I'd see something so amazing in my life. I totally want to work on that. So how do I convince my boss? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> if you go on the web and you're like, reasons why I should be able to do GraphQL, you'll see reasons like this. These are the benefits that get touted. Oh man, it prevents overfetching. Just kidding, it prevents underfetching. It solves the n plus one problem. Or it prevents endpoint bloat. Seriously though, I mean, I kind of know what some of these are, or actually most of them. 
but none of them are compelling. None of them would be like, yeah, I'll fork over a million dollars to redo the, the, the APIs. <laughs> no, just not gonna happen. So let's, let's look at some reasons that your boss or your boss's boss might actually get excited. Your pages will load faster, especially for mobile apps. Developer productivity will increase because front-end and back-end developers don't need to wait for each other. There are fewer errors, which means more reliability, because you can have strong typing from front to back. For instance, you could write your front-end code in TypeScript, use GraphQL to transfer the data, and then your back-end could be written in Java, and your database could be in SQL. All of those have types from front to back. And it's absolutely perfect for public APIs. So instead of writing reams and reams and reams of documentation, and uh, handling lots of support calls, it's now self-documenting and discoverable. There's no excuse. So, how do you get started? Fantastic. Write it from scratch. Just kidding. Use Apollo. Um, Apollo is the go-to. It's a suite of technologies that it can provide you with a ready-to-go client and ready-to-go server to build off of. And you can see that it's, it's massively popular. Here's, here's a comparison between Apollo and Relay. Relay is the official solution from Facebook. And you can see that Apollo's beating Relay very handily. Don't ask what's up with these spikes, I have <laughs> no clue. So here's your, here's, your, uh, here's your takeaway. Go through this list probably in this order. Start with these videos on how to GraphQL. It'll give you a great quick introduction. Then there's loads more stuff, lots and lots of useful things there at that second link. If you have a paid plural site subscription, definitely go and watch this video. This will help you tremendously. It'll introduce you to all the terms, what's a resolver, what's a mutation, what's a query, what's a subscription, and then go through these tutorials. Now, a quick caveat about tutorials. None of them are perfect. This, this technology is cutting edge, so I have not found a perfect tutorial yet. Some of them are outdated, some, all of them skip steps. So what I would recommend, you're not gonna find a perfect one, just work in one directory and check out the final solution in a different directory. If you get stuck or something's just blatantly not working, just go and cheat, grab the, final, the, the code from the final solution. So start with the one that I did. It's a little outdated, but it'll still, it's very valuable. It'll get you up to speed with a working GraphQL solution, front end and back end with WebSockets, so incredible. And then you can move to the second one. The second one is super in depth. It'll take you like 20 hours to do it, seriously in depth. And then you can do the client one as well. So, at this point I'd ask if you have any questions. This is a lightning talk, so you don't get to. You'll have to find me afterwards. <laughs> Thank you guys.